Hello, welcome to my talk. I'll be speaking about Plumber, a new open source data science package. Data science is all about experimentation. When we start a project, we may try a new feature, for example, to see if it improves model performance or simply just change the colors or the scale in a chart to communicate results easily. And each experiment that we try goes through three different stages. We have to think what we are gonna do, we code it, and finally we execute it. And this final stage stage execution can be fully automated, but it depends on us. Because if we are moving files around or running some scripts manually, we are not really fully automating the process. And we want that because the more experiments that we try, the higher the chance of success. So we want to be able to fully automate uh, experimentation running so that we can try more things. What's the easiest way to automate execution? Well. We can just code the entire project in a single file and in a really long file. The problem is, is that if we have the code that loads the data, that cleans it, that transforms it, that trains a model, that outputs some um, model evaluation charts, there are, no, there are really no clear boundaries among these um, different parts. And this may also lead to a lot of different problems, for example, unwanted interactions. Imagine what would happen if you use a variable in the first line and it has side effects three or 400 lines below. You don't want that because that's gonna be really tough to debug. So we need not only reproducible projects, but also maintainable ones. And this is gonna be even more important if more than one person is contributing to the project or you have to analyze more than one data set. So maintainability, this is a term that people think sounds too far away from now, right? Uh, but really maintainability is also about the immediate future, is being able to understand what we did yesterday or the week before, because we are going to forget. And it's very important to be able to quickly start running experiments again so that we can try more things. So maintainability is important. And there's this quote from, from Patrick Ball that really conveys what I want to say about maintainability in, in data projects. Without LORF structure, we forget what we've done in the past. We can't read each other's work and we can't test whether what we've done is correct. How do we build maintainable data projects? Well, we have to build a data pipeline. A data pipeline is just breaking down logic in small tasks where the output of the tasks becomes the input for the next set of tasks. And once we have this structure, we have new challenges because now we have to manage multiple files because potentially every task is a, a separate file. We also have to route outputs because we have to make sure that outputs become inputs for the appropriate files and we also have to orchestrate execution because there's a pretty fine order in our pipeline. We have to make sure that we run dependencies first. What's the current approach to solve this problem? There's a set of tools called workflow managers that allow us to write code and turn it into a pipeline. There's really a lot of options. There's Make, Airflow, Luigi, etc. And what are they? common problems that I've encountered when using these tools. The first and most obvious is that we have to learn a new tool. We have to read some documentation and become familiar with different concepts and how we can use that tool to build a data pipeline. The second one is that we have to write pipeline code. It's not code that does any kind of analysis. It's just the code that we need so that we can specify our code in, as a data pipeline. And finally, some of these tools also add a layer of complexity because we they come with features that we may not need, especially do, during early stages of development, but we still have to configure them. And we are best just focusing in our analysis. So let's talk about Bloomberg. Bloomberg is a new library that focuses on usability and follows a convention over configuration approach so that we can write pipelines easily. It follows three conventions. The first is that each task is a script. The second one is that, uh, is that the scripts declare dependencies via an upstream variable. And finally, scripts declare output files as a product variable. 
This is an example. And as you can see in the code in the left side, there's nothing specific about Bloomberg in this task. It's just a script that analyzes some data. In this case, this is uh, the example code for training a model. So this script is gonna depend on two tasks, clean users and clean actions. That's why we are declaring those in our special upstream variable. The second special variable product is saying that this file is going to generate two files, a Jupyter notebook, which uh, we are going to explain this part in the next slide, and a model. So we are going to train a model and we are going to save it in this script. There's something interesting about this script because the upstream variable that you write only contains the name of the tasks that you want to use as dependencies because you are going to use those outputs as inputs but you don't know where those files are. You are just saying that you want to use those dependencies. That's why Plumber does a cell injection process because it's gonna take your dependencies, look for the output files of those tasks and put them in your code so that you can load the appropriate files from, from the right location. And you can see on the left side, that's the code that you write. You just list your dependencies. But in the right side, that's the code that actually gets executed. And that one contains the location for the files that you need. And if the user interface looks familiar, you are right. That's a Jupyter notebook. And it's because Plumber converts every script into a notebook before it gets executed. And the reason is that this allows us to leverage the IPYNB format so that we don't have to worry about saving tables or charts in, in different files because we can embed the content in a single file. And this is very useful because we can, for example, compare versions of pipelines. We can compare the output of the pipeline from the week before to the code that we have right now, and we can quickly get the difference by just taking a look at the output from the notebooks. Let's recap about the build process. The first step for building a pipeline in Plumber is that you have to extract the upstream and product variables. Plumber extracts those variables on each script for you. Then you have to determine execution order, and that's just assembling the pipeline in the right order so that you can ex execute dependencies first. Then we have to inject the code. We have to replace the list of dependency names that you want with the map that given the name of the dependency is gonna give you the location of the files. So you can use them as inputs. And finally, we execute the pipeline. Then the good thing about Plumber is that it's gonna skip up-to-date tasks, meaning it's not gonna run tasks whose source code hasn't changed. For example, in this pipeline, if you modify the source code for clean actions, you only have to run clean actions and train model. You don't have to run any of the other steps. And this is gonna save a lot of time, especially when your tasks take a lot of time to run or where you have a dozen or even more tasks in your pipeline. Let's see a sample workflow. We start with five scripts, and this is the same pipeline that we have shown before. And the way you run your pipeline is that you simply have to execute Plumber build. And this command is gonna give, command is gonna give you all the output that you need. So as you can see, the result is that you get five Jupyter notebooks, one per script, and you can actually change the extension to get different formats like HTML or PDF. But for now, this, we have these five Jupyter notebooks. We also have uh, some data files that are generated from loading the data, from cleaning it. And finally, we see the model that we train and, and we save. Since Bloomer has to do this cell injection process, your code, the code that you write, is not going to run as it is. To enable interactive development, Plumber integrates with Jupyter. So when you open a script, it's gonna open it as a notebook. And this is thanks to the Jupyter uh, package. Then Plumber is gonna inject the cell that you need so that you, you know the location for your input files. And then in this way, you can interactively develop your scripts. Finally, since you still have to run Plumber build to get your pipeline up to date, you, you have to, you can make sure that you, there is no, there is no hidden state in your pipeline. And this is a nice double check just to make sure that things run. Let's see a quick demo. We see the five scripts that make the pipeline that we've seen in the slides. We are going to create the output folder. Now we are going to build the pipeline.
we see that it's running get actions, now clean actions, get users, clean users, and finally train model. If we run the command again, we'll see that it's going to return very quickly because we haven't changed any of the tasks. There's nothing to do. Let's take a look at the output folder. We now see a bunch of files here. We see the notebooks that were generated from the scripts. We see some data files and also the model that we trained and saved. We also see some source files. These are just files that Plumber uses to keep track of source code changes. Let's open one of the notebooks. This is a notebook that was generated from the train model script. We see the code here, and we see the injected cell here. We can also hide the code in case we just want to show the output. We have a few tables here and a chart here. Since we're using the Jupyter Notebook format, we just have to print the tables or the charts. We don't have to save anything. This is very convenient because if we start making changes to the pipeline, by just looking at the output notebooks, we can compare results and spot the differences. There are a few features that I didn't cover. There's support for R scripts. SQL is also supported. There's a way for you to parameterize pipelines and a command line interface is automatically generated for you so you can switch the values for those uh, parameters. There is also support for testing. You can run data, for example, you can run data tests every time you run a task to, to verify your, your expectations about the data. And you can also start debugging sessions with PDB or IPDB. A few other resources. Here's how to install Plumber for updates, questions, feedback. Follow me on Twitter. The code is on GitHub. There's also a separate repo for examples. We also have a website and you can download this presentation from that URL. That's it. Thanks for watching.